Now, one of the things that can make compounding a little bit difficult is that it does make it rather hard to compare, for instance, uh, an, an investment that compounds monthly to an investment that compounds daily or one that compounds annually. Because we know that there's gonna be all this compound interest that occurs, uh, it is gonna make it a little bit hard for us to say, decide which one's better. Now we know in general that more compounding is better, but for instance, it's not always clear exactly if you have more compounding uh, versus a higher interest rate, which one is gonna do you, make you better off, okay? So the way that we facilitate comparison between uh, investment opportunities with different compounding periods is by calculating something called the effective annual rate. Now, this is a really, really important tool. It's something that I will expect you to be able to use in the future. Uh, I will expect that you will use it in the future, hopefully if you're ever in the situation where you're judging uh, some opportunities that you might have or a loan that you might be undertaking, okay? Now, the, the difference comes from something called uh, the stated rate, okay? Now, the stated rate is the rate that's provided in any contract. So this is why all the problems that we work with generally you are given an annual rate and you're given an annual number of periods to start with. So the problem says you've got a credit card that charges a 22% annual rate and you have the and you're gonna leave the money on the, the you're gonna leave the money on the credit card for three years. This is standard practice, and again we'll talk about this in just a little while, but this is actually by law. Banks must report the annual rate, and the annual rate is called the stated rate or the APR the annual percentage rate, okay? So it's called the stated rate because it's stated right there in the contract. This is the one that has to be said. But then in the next line, the bank can say, however, we compound at a monthly or a daily or a quarterly period. So this stated rate then becomes sort of patently untrue. It says we charge you 20% per year, but we compound daily and now all of us in this class, now we know that those aren't the same things, right? If they're, gonna if they're gonna charge you daily interest, then you are gonna end up paying a higher effective rate than 20% per year because you're gonna also pay all this interest on interest that's compounding every year. That's gonna make it a difficult proposition to say compare, right? Imagine you had the choice between an annually compounded credit card at 22%, or a daily compounded credit card at 20%. Could we compare those two options and tell which one is better? We know that the effective rate of the daily compound is not 20, it's gonna be higher, but is it gonna be higher than 22%? We're not sure. What can help us tell that is the effective rate. Okay, so the effective annual rate or the EAR, it brings everything that we know, all different interest rates and compounding periods, all to a level playing field so that we can compare them as if all of the different rates were compounded on an annual basis. Okay, so we convert a rate with any compounding period to a rate that is actually, that the, to the effective rate that would be an annual compounding period. And you can see the formula here. The effective annual rate is one plus the APR. So that's the annual rate that's given divided by M. This is the number of periods and that, that is compounded in the year. Now it says M, that, that can often lead you to jump to be months. That's not months, it's the number of compounding periods in a year. So if we are talking about daily compounding, then M is gonna be 365, okay? So raised to the M, again, raised to the number of compounding periods per year, minus one, okay? This is how we get the effective annual rate Again, this is, a pro this is a formula that would be on your formula sheet, but there is also a calculator function that can help us do this quickly. Uh, and I will show you how to use the calculator function when we work this quick example. Again, we'll start by using the formula so we can see what actually happens, how this is getting worked out, uh, and then we'll jump and work it on the calculator. Uh, there's some brief instruction here on the calculator, what the buttons are, how to get there. You are looking for a new environment, not the, the time value money environment. This is called the icon V or interest conversion environment. Uh, and so you'll see this in the example that we're gonna work right here. Uh, welcome back. Uh, so here's, the, here's, some of, uh, here's some context behind why the, why the world works the way it works, okay? 
uh, banks quote the annual percentage rate or the stated rate by law, right? So there is a federal law that says in a contract for a loan or any other investment, the stated rate, the one listed on the contract must be the APR. Now this was a law that originated with good intentions. Congress thought that people would have, were having too much uh, trouble trying to understand rates that were say, you know, a daily rate is like 0.05%. And they didn't have a good enough grasp on how that actually worked in a, over a long period of time. You might have said, somebody offers you a loan and they say, listen, we compound daily, but your interest rate is 0.05%. And you say, oh my gosh, that's great. That's tiny, that, that's no interest at all. This sounds like a great deal. Uh, but in fact, if you convert that to the effective annual rate, you find out that that's actually an enormous uh, annual rate and that you're paying through the nose, right? So in an effort to protect consumers, Congress instituted a law saying you need to provide the annual rate and the APR is calculated by taking the interest rate per period. So say the interest rate per day multiplied by the number of days. That's the APR. Now, this is close to but not, of course, not exactly the same as the effective annual rate, right? Now, this is one of the problems with having lawmakers who aren't necessarily subject matter experts, right? If the law had been written by finance professors, we would have said you need to put the effective annual rate as the stated rate in the contract. That way, they're all comparable and there is no hidden fees, not fees. There's no hidden interest being charged, right? Uh, and of course, that's, they don't ask, nobody asks me when they write laws, this is an old law, this is an old standard, uh, nobody's likely to change it anytime soon, but it is something that you need to be aware of. You will absolutely see the APR in your contract, and lots and lots of contracts don't even show the EAR anywhere, right? They just say, here's the APR, here's how often we compound, and then you, it's left to, up to you to see what the difference is. Now, you saw in the example that we just worked that that difference is not always clear cut. In other words, your decision is not always as straightforward as you might think. So if you are making choices between credit cards or loans or banks or even some, uh, some more complicated investments at some point in your life, you must compare those investments. You must calculate them and compare them using the EAR instead of the stated rates. Okay. Uh, so we worked a couple of examples. Here's another one. It's not something that we're gonna work. Let's just talk about it in general. So let's say we have a credit card that indicates a 20% APR. That'll be in the contract. Again, that's not an uncommon uh, APR for a credit card. It's calculated on a daily basis, which is again, fairly common for credit cards. What we wanna know is what are we effectively paying? We know we're not paying 20% per year because we're paying interest on a daily basis. So there's gonna be compounding every day. And that means that ultimately what we'll end up paying over the year is higher than 20%. Well, we can use our formula to calculate the effective annual rate. And we can see that the effective rate here is actually 22.13%. So we paid the same amount on this credit card if we are charged 20% on a daily basis or 22.13% on an annual basis. And that's how we compare them. Right, so, so we're actually paying 2.13% uh, higher interest because we're compounding daily, and that's pretty significant, right? If we had a $1,000 loan, an extra 2% is an extra 20 bucks a year. If we had a million dollar loan, then an extra 2% is an extra 20,000 a year. And now the numbers start to seem significant, right? Remember, this is a corporate finance class. So we're talking about corporations and the loans that we're gonna be talking about in the next chapter are in the millions, hundreds of millions and billions of dollars range. So 2% is a significant amount of money. We need to be aware of that, okay? Now, what's the max? How much compounding can we have? It's clear that the more frequent the compounding, the higher the effective rate, the higher the future value is gonna be, either the more interest you're gonna be charged or the more money you're gonna earn on your investment, whichever way you wanna think about it. Is there some limit, right? Well, we talked about daily. We could go hourly, we could go every second, right? or we could do what's called continuous compounding. And this used to be fairly common. It is still common in some kinds of advanced financial contracts. If you take uh, investments or options classes later on in your college career, you'll talk about continuous compounding contracts. Uh, and this means that uh, the interest is compounded every single instant with no break, right? 
Continuous means infinite number of compounding periods, and that's a pretty significant thing to even kind of conceptualize. Not every second, not every millisecond or picosecond or nanosecond, but absolutely every instant. Now, strangely enough, while you might think that would make everything harder to try and figure out how to incorporate compounding every single instant, actually, math is, likes infinity. Uh, and so the calculation for the EAR on a continuously compounding basis is significantly easier and less complex than the calculation for the EAR in any other compounding period. Again, for whatever reason, math with infinities uh, it is much more straightforward. It's much nicer. So you can see the formula here, not something I'm gonna test you on, not something I'm gonna ask you about, just something I think is valuable to know, or at least interesting. Uh, so if you have continuous compounding the formula, to convert a continuously compounded rate to an effective annual rate is E raised to the rate minus one, where E is Euler's number, the special, um, uh, irrational number 2.718 forever, ever, ever onwards, okay? So again, not super complicated. You can do it on your calculator here. Uh, what, but one thing I think is interesting and, and one of the reasons why I wanna bring it up is I want you to look at the solution down here at the bottom of this slide. So if we had our 20% uh, credit card and it was compounded continuously, so every instant instead of every day, so a difference of 365 days to an infinite number of instants, the effective annual rate is only larger by 0.01%, right? So daily, the effective rate for a daily compounded 20% credit card is 22.13. The effective annual rate for a continuously compounded 20% credit card is 22.14. And that's a huge, huge, huge increase in the number of compounding periods for an almost minuscule difference in the actual interest that you earn, right? So while this is kind of cool and the math is easier, uh, and so that the, the, the math being easier is why this is sometimes used in more complicated financial instruments, but the, the actual value, the additional value that you get is really small. And so you really don't see continuous compoundings, particularly in a uh, personal context, right? About the highest compounding you'll see in a personal setting is daily compounding.